Hi everyone, welcome to another Autodesk screencast by Zan Ta of Repo Products. This screencast will showcase how to create spaces and zones within Revit 2017. If you like this video and would like to see more, please search for Zan Ta or VAR2016. Thanks for watching. Here I am in Revit 2017. I have a mechanical file template that I used to create a new Revit project. I have a architectural Revit model that has been linked in by going over to the Insert tab and clicking Link Revit File. That Revit Arc file has some rooms and room names and numbers. I also used Copy Monitor tool within the Collaborate tab here via Select Link to copy and monitor all the objects that are in the architectural model against a brand new Revit MEP model. If I go over to the 3D view, <clears throat> you can see that there are objects here that are for uh, the actual MEP model and the actual Arct Revit linked model. So if I were to take that linked model and hide it, you can see the Arc, uh, the Revit MEP model content. We'll switch this to coordination so it's easier for you to see. And as you can see, all these objects are objects that are created from the Arc model and they are linked and copied. We'll head back over to the plan view and because we have the space naming utility turned on and installed I can actually launch that to create names and numbers that match the spaces that I'm about to place. <clears throat> In order for that tool to work obviously you have to have the spaces. So if we go to the analyze tab there's a space command here. This space object is very similar to the architect's room object however there is a difference. Um, the room object just gives us basic information as the name, the number of the room, the area, and the volume. <clears throat> Whereas under the analyze tab the space object command does the same thing but it also takes into account analytical data for energy analysis and it ties back to the HVAC equipment that's in the room. So when we want to place a space we can just click the command and then you'll notice that it sees the contents that you've already created and what's happening it's looking is that it's looking for objects that are room bounding. I can go ahead and click wherever I want <clears throat> to place a space and tag on placement is on by default. The tag that's being used is called space tag. You can do one with an area, you can do one with a volume. And if I click to place it, it gives you volume data as well. If it's not going to give you any volume data, just make sure under the annotate tab under tags that you have um, looking at loaded tags and symbols that the tag number one is loaded and then number two taking a look at under spaces and zones under area volume computation or under the architecture tab room area area volume computations and this field areas and volumes is checked to be turned on. That's placing the room object at a single instance level. You have the ability to click spaces and click place spaces automatically and it will do so across the board. Now they're all going to be named and numbered as space and just the generic numbers. However since we have the space naming utility you can use that tool to copy that information across from the ARC model. Um, I did a separate screencast video on just the SNU2 utility, so you can look at that video when you need to. Now that we have the spaces placed, if we need to select them, you'll notice that the reference lines that are in X are kind of hard to see. If I open up the Visibility Graphics dialog box by typing in VV or VG, make sure your filter list shows MEP content <clears throat> and scroll down to Spaces. If you expand Spaces, you can see you can put a check mark for interior and reference. Interior um, and reference allows you to see the data a little easier and easier to, for you to select. This is how you create spaces in Revit MEP 2017 or just Revit 2017. In regards to zones, a zone is nothing more than stating grab a whole bunch of spaces, collect them together, and have them act as a single uh, unit, if you will, for the purposes of HVAC calculations. So let's just say, let's pretend that this is the wing <clears throat> of a hospital and you need to have all of this 
area zoned as a single zone. So I can click the command zone. And in the instance property, it gives you the name of the zone. We can call it, you know, East Wing uh, Zone 1, something like that. And it's what it's asking you to do is it's asking you to add spaces. So you can click and pick the spaces that you want to add. And let's just say hypothetically, I want the zoning to be on one zone here and a separate zone here. So I'll just pick the ones that I need. I hit finish editing the zone and it's done. If I use under the annotate tab of the ribbon, tag by category and select the zone, it'll pop up, it'll display and you have leaders turned on and attached. So I'll just click to place it and that tag is placed and we can kind of massage that tag. Now we can do the exact same thing for the lower spaces as well as a separate zone or we can select this particular zone that we're dealing with and go to its properties and say East Wing Zone 1A just to be safe. Now we'll do another zone and we'll pick the other remaining spaces. You can also just do a window selection by the way. And again over here East Wing Zone 1B Revit kind of figures out what you're trying to do and gives you an automatic naming. If, if that's good for you, you can leave it. If you don't like it, you can change it. Hit finish editing the zone and it's created. Again, you can tag it by just putting your mouse over the object and it gets tagged. You can obviously move the tag and adjust the display so it makes sense. So this is how you create zones and spaces within Revit 2017 or Revit MEP 2017. Technically, there is no more Revit Arc, Revit Structure, or Revit MEP. It's just Revit 2017 moving this forward from this point forward. Thank you.